Welcome to our devos this week where we have been tackling the subject of forgiveness, or I should say the process of forgiveness. Most people don't realize that it's a process, but one of the reasons why you struggle with unforgiveness in your life is because you haven't recognized that it's a process, and you're holding yourself to the standard that it's a one-time, once-and-done thing, and not realizing that unforgiveness has crept into your heart because forgiveness is a process. And today, I want to talk to you about the uncomfortable subject of confrontation. I, there are a few people that like confrontation. There are people that love confrontation. They're like, oh, I love confrontation. And we know, what we know about you when you say that is that you're a jerk. I'm sorry, that's what the truth is, okay? Most people don't like having ongoing confrontation with other people. We love the results of confrontation, but we don't want to live in a household that's filled with confrontation. We don't want to go to a workplace that's filled with confrontation. We don't want to have employees where we're constantly in the midst of confrontation. Most of us will do anything just shy of moving to a different part of the world to avoid confronting. But I want to share with you today, when it comes to forgiveness and when it comes to somebody that's hurt you, that you have to repeatedly deal with, this is really specific, somebody that you have to repeatedly deal with, you have to be willing to confront to connect. You have to be willing to confront to connect. Or I should say you have to be willing to confront to restore the brokenness in the relationship as a result of their sin or their wrong done against you, something they've done to hurt you. You have to be willing to confront if it's bothering you. Whatever in your life that you are refusing to confront by the people around you that you habitually deal with, you are allowing. Don't forget that I said that. Whatever you refuse to confront, you permit. Now, I'm going to say this again just so that we're clear. This part of the devotional is expressly dealing with the people that you repeatedly have to deal with, meaning coworkers, friends, family members, children, spouses, parents, those ones that we have as a part of our lives, okay? This does not apply to someone that has grievously abused you, okay? You're called to forgive them, sure, but you do not have to connect to them. And sometimes Christians, they have trouble figuring out where the line is, meaning if you were sexually abused, if somebody assaulted you sexually, God is not holding you accountable to go back and try to be reconciled to them for the sake of Christ. God is not holding you accountable to a spouse that has cheated on you, sexually abused you, damaged you, that you go back and like, okay, let's just make this work. We, let, let bygones be bygones. No, it's not. It doesn't work like that. But for those who are in our lives that we are trying to save the relationship and we are trying to connect to them, sometimes confrontation through forgiveness is the way that we have to connect. Let me give you what Jesus says about this subject. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. A very clear, clear way to deal with confrontation that nobody ever does. Nobody does this. Jesus says, if your brother or sister sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. This is so simple. Like, uh, 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 my daughter can understand it. She's in kindergarten. My son, four-year-old, he can understand this, okay? But Christians have such a problem with this. What do we do? If somebody sins against you, what do you do? You call your best friend. Can you believe what they did to me? Do you know what they said about me? What a jerk. They, I can't stand. And we, you know, we, we start to lather on the offense by talking about how grievous it was that they did this thing. Or we go to somebody else and go, hey, um, can I talk to you about something? Uh, did you know what so-and-so did to me? Yeah, yeah, I think you should confront them for me. You should tell them what they did was wrong. You should tell them that their behavior was bad. And you remove yourself out of it. Why? Because nobody likes confrontation. Unless you like confrontation, and we talked about that already. So what do we do? We have to be willing, if we're trying to establish the relationship and remain connected to somebody that we're dealing with that has sinned against us or hurt us, we have to say the confrontational things. Now, let me give you an easy way to do this. You have to do it focused completely, not on them, but on you. Hey, today when you said blah, 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 I was hurt by that. I don't understand why you said it, and it hurt me for these several reasons. You have to focus on how it's impacted you. You never want to go into a confrontation and go, let me tell you why you were insensitive today. Let me tell you why you're lacking with regard to understanding how people are. Let me tell you why you're uncaring or why you're lazy. No, 
You have to be willing to go to somebody with a genuine humility and vulnerability about what's going on with you and tell them with a questioning curiosity how it's impacted you and ask them, what can I make of this? The Bible also expressly states when it comes to being truthful, because some of you that you have a tendency to lean on the, I like to confront people all the time spectrum. And you're like, oh, I have no problem doing this. I love, who can I confront next? Okay, be careful because it also says in Ephesians chapter 4, 15, chapter 4, verse 15, speak the truth in love. We love speaking truth, but do we do it in a loving way? Do we do it with that person's edification, with that person's opportunity to restore the relationship? Do we do it with that person's relationship to God in mind? Or do we simply do it as a way to say, ha ha, I caught you in a sin today. You were gossiping when you called me. Therefore, you're a jerk. I win. I'm superior. No, that is not what confrontation is for. Jesus says, if this person has sinned against you, go tell them your fault. Tell them the fault that, that you have between you. But do it here, as the apostle Paul says, in love. This is part of the process of forgiveness. Somebody that you love has hurt you, which they do. I've hurt my loved ones. I've hurt, you know, people that I care about. I've done that. You have to be willing to apologize. I was listening to a pastor. I don't remember which one because I listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, But somebody asked him. He had children that were grown. um, And they all love the Lord and they follow the Lord. And they said, is there something that you wish you would have done more with your kids when you were raising them and, and, you know, maybe some ways. And without, he interrupted the person that was interviewing him and he said, yeah, apologize to them more. And boy, did that hit me. Apologize to your kids? Apologize to them more. If you want to restore the relationship, you want to remain connected to them. If somebody's hurt you, then you have to be willing to confront it. And if you've hurt them, you have to be willing to apologize. It all works. It's all a process and it's the process of forgiveness.